Hey everybody, welcome to the internet, or real life. I'm at that place, GT Motorsports, and uh, if you're wondering, this is where the Duker is. This is the closest, oh, I'm gonna hacky sack this. If I can get it up on my boot, hold on a second. This is important to me. <laughs> I win, okay. Anyway, this is the closest KTM dealership to me, so this is where I took the Duke. Um, man, I think that was, it's probably over a month ago. It's been a long time. It's always one thing after another. Usually it's my fault. I keep adding stuff to the bike. Um, but what's going on right now is, uh, well, I'll save that for just a minute. I just want to let you look at my bike because I realized some of you guys actually want to see what it looks like and you can't see it when I'm riding. So interestingly enough, there's a new 650 right there. So there's my generation, the 2015. I, I think this is I think this is it for the next generation. I think 2016 to now, that's what it looks like. I could be wrong, but it doesn't look bad. It's just, it's kind of interesting because like here's a 400. And if you were to look at like the 636, they all, they look so darn similar. And I'm sure they did it on purpose. They're trying to make the less powerful bikes look like the regular. I mean, look at, look at the fairing work on here. Look at that gauge. It's like the same. It's so similar, but back at least, well, maybe not back in my generation for that bike, but the generation before, you could see the difference from afar. I, like, if I was if I was out riding and both those bikes went by, I wouldn't know which one's which. That one is definitely a 650. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but it, it looks like I don't even know what that one is. I'm guessing it's a three, 400. That's my guess is a 400. I feel stupid. I don't know what it is. I don't know. I can't tell. Which is something I actually like. I like removing branding and like the size and stuff because, and this is what you're gonna see with my Duke. I like the, what you call it? The, I like it so if your bike drives by, you look at it and go, what is that? I don't know what it is. Maybe if you took a second to go like this. Ah, okay, but like it, it, sh it shouldn't be obvious what it is. It should be unique because that's how I like my bike. So I'm surprised so many people don't know this is a 650. They don't even know it's a Kawasaki. They might guess Kawasaki, but they have no idea what size it is, which is cool. But uh, yeah, the Duke is looking really good. It's just got one more thing to go, but I'm gonna start riding home. So let's make a cut right here. Gonna interrupt the Duke story for a little quip on the weather. So I came out here two days ago to uh, put stickers on the bike and stuff, the uh, Duker, and it was like 32 and cloudy. It was pretty cold, but I did okay. I was actually fairly comfortable. The half hour ride out here and now two days later it's sunny and 50 man that's a world of difference the only problem is all the water on the road mostly it's dry at least out on the highway but there's a lot of this crap too so it gets up on the camera lens it gets up on my visor and so that kind of sucks but anyway i'm surprised how nice 50 is comparatively and i've been you know it's been winter for a while now i'm pretty over it but i'm also just getting used to it 50 and sunny is nice like i got for one thing, I got appropriate gear now. I got an actual winter riding jacket that doesn't have holes in it. So anyway, I, I just had a really nice ride out here, aside from the traffic and the rain and or the, the water on the ground. So I'm hoping that it's nice on the way back. I think it's gonna be a short video. We'll see. I'm just kind of talk about the uh, Duker some more. All right, so what's going on with the Duker is all of the mods are on um, except for the wheel tape. The red stripes on the wheel so that's not a big deal i'll do that whenever i pick it up and i'm sure i'll make a video of me picking it up when it's ready but there's one small dumb thing with it it's a technological issue um i have an aftermarket exhaust i have an, uh, an austin exhaust uh it's not a full exhaust it's just a it's not a slip on either it's it's the i don't you call that it's a decat for one thing so that would require uh remapping in the ecu so uh i could have bought uh, in Austin Racing, uh, I think it's called an Abnevise. I guess it's their equivalent of a Power Commander. Maybe I'm wrong. Could have bought that, but it was really expensive. I didn't think it was necessary. Turns out it's not because all you really need is a, a full Acropovic map because it's, I guess, similar. Oh, that was gross. It's similar enough that it should run really good. So, um, what happened? Uh, that, that exhaust has been on for a while. Um, they, how do I explain this now? I'll try to explain this as thoroughly as I can. And this is hearsay. This is what I hear me and then me telling you. So it's just kind of like a game of telephone. But basically, uh, that dealership has um, two KTM tools. What's called them Tool 1 and the new one's called Tool 2. Um, 
Tool 2, uh, when Tool 2 came out, the dealership didn't need to use Tool 1 anymore because there are very few things that the Tool 2 could not do. However, one of the things the new Tool 2 cannot do is install an acupodic mat to my bike. So they went back to Tool 1 and then found out that their license for it is out of date. So they contacted KTM, which was the weekend. So they were closed. And then after that, they finally gave them a code, but it didn't work, like a license, I should say, to, to renew Tool 1. And then they gave them a code that for whatever reason won't activate until Saturday. And you know, th this was like a week ago. So it's been like sitting there for a week, more or less me going by and putting stickers on it and stuff. Just some little cute things. But so Saturday, hopefully the license that KTM gave the dealership will allow them to use their tool one. And then they can just plug in the computer and then install the map and it'll run fine and, and it, it'll be done. Literally, that's the last thing a bike needs before I can take it home is for that map to be installed. Now, it could be one thing in a line of long technological stupid problems where like the license that the KTM gave them won't work and then we'll have to wait several more days. It's a possibility. And then once the map is installed, I should say, they have to ride it, they have to test it and it's been snowing and raining a lot. I'm, I wasn't thinking I was gonna get out at all today. I didn't think I was gonna get to do it finally Friday because I've been rained and snowed in. And I can't make a motor vlog, but I was like 50 and sound like, dude, I'm going. So I went out today and here, let's see this. Yeah. this is the best sounding bike ever. Yeah, so far. Guess we'll find out. I, I got to turn on the KTM, the Duker, just but it only turns on for a second. It runs like crap because it needs a map. Um, it sounded pretty cool. I did not rev it. Um, I'm not gonna really truly hear it until I pick it up, but I'm hoping I'm hoping that'll be next week. Um, whenever I pick it up, I'm just gonna pick it up, ride it home, put the wheel tape on it, maybe put one or two more small things on it. And I'll talk about this later, but that's gonna be like the official build. Like at that point, it's gonna be technically done, but there is more coming because after its break-in period, after its first service, which is like 600, 640 miles, that's probably like 600 miles to go, at least something like that. It's gonna be a little while, probably another month of riding around town. Um, once that happens, I'll take it in to get it serviced. And when it's getting serviced, I'm gonna have a bunch of parts put on to make it, I'm gonna call it, what'd you call that? Touring compatible. I'm gonna get a windshield, a luggage system, highway pegs, and it's already got heated grips, cruise control, and a seat, things like that. But it's gonna have uh, things put on it that can go on or off depending on if I'm riding around town or if I'm ready to go, you know, on a huge trip. Because I really, I'm excited. Actually, that's what I'm looking forward to more than anything else is just a really long ride on that bike. And I forget, like the last time I did a long ride was on this bike and it was in Colorado. And I was thinking, it happened, it came out like a week after I did my trip, but I'm gonna try to talk to avoid the wind a little bit. I mean, it's actually comfortable, but I'm trying to make it so you can hear me. When I did that ride, shortly afterward, GoPro released the live stream function, and I was like, shoot, that would've been a great thing to have when I was doing that long trip. So whenever I do my next big trip, which will be on the Duker, I'm hoping I can live stream the whole thing. I think that'd be really neat. So anyway, that's what's going on with the Super Duke. That's your update. I'm gonna stop talking because it's just gonna be like this the whole time, and I don't think you wanna hear me like this, and I don't wanna yell. So I'm gonna enjoy a nice cruise home, Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully I'll have the Duker for you next week. And uh, I'll see you later. Bye.